your spring break? Um, going home and going to Five Below a lot. Um, yeah. Probably college stuff. Uh, I have to go college tour around the everywhere in America. I have to do it the entire time. Oh, but my girlfriend's coming home with me for a week, so that's going to be fun. Yeah. Better than college touring. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I'm going to Boston. Um, and uh, practice. I don't know. It's a it's a break, so. LA. We just bought our tickets. Oh, well, I'm probably just going to go home and see my family. I'm really excited for that. I'm going to get some more fish from my fish tank here. Hello everyone and welcome to the February edition of ITV. I'm Cooper and today we are introducing a new segment, Find the Blueberry. Every episode, a blueberry that looks like this will appear on the screen. And if you find it, send the timestamp and your name to interlockingtv at interlocking.org to win a free MoFro gift card. <laughs> Hi, my name is Arushi. I am a second year senior singer-songwriter from Bangalore in India. My name is Sarah, I am a second year film major senior, and I am from Beijing, China. My experience here at Interlochen as an international student has been amazing. People here are really supportive and interested about my culture, and it's, I've always felt welcomed and at home here. It's cool, it's great. I feel like even though, as I said, it's mainly like a very American space, but it's still like, um, because we're all art kids, we're like, people here are very open-minded. I don't, I do feel like I belong here. I feel like this school does very well in generating this sense of inclusivity for everyone, even though we know full well that this is a different culture, that I feel everything is different around here, but I find that like more exciting than like threatening in a sense. So I think, yeah, it has been great. I've traveled back home only once in my time here, and it was really long. From like, because there's no like direct flights from here to like basically anywhere. Yeah. And so I have to like transfer from like Traverse City to Chicago and then to some other country like Korea or Japan and then transfer to Beijing. So that's like three or four transfer flights, four. I've had multiple opportunities to connect with people that share my culture and also people of different cultures as there are so many clubs over here and associations where you can just like gather with your peers and learn about their cultures and also just opportunities to perform and um, you know share stuff that resonate in my culture. So I've had quite a few opportunities too. Um, I feel like I had some instances where I can connect back to my culture here, but it's, for most of the time, it was pretty, like, because um, there isn't, like, a large portion of people that are from my home country or any Asian country, so, like, it's, most of the time, it's, like, a little bit hard to, like, find something that reminds me of my home culture. But I do feel like there's like an atmosphere of inclusivity here that I don't feel like kind of uncomfortable or like ashamed of anything that are like from my own original, like anything like that. Well, I've always been passionate about music and I think coming to a place with state of the art facilities, such wonderful faculty and an opportunity to network with such talented artists was a driving force for this decision to come study at Interlochen. And yeah, I just wanna keep growing in my art, get better at it, and keep making music. Pursue my passion in film, mainly. And I also always thought boarding schools are cool, which I don't know if any everyone agrees with that, but yeah, I found them cool before. And yeah, I definitely don't regret my decision coming here. I feel like this is a great place with a great artistic atmosphere and great people. What is the thing you miss the most about home? Definitely the food. I, I think Indian food is so, so good. Um, friends and family and just being able to like, I feel like it's the personal space that I had a lot at my home and also just like, of course my family. It's like, it can be difficult here, like being kind of like 
far away from my family and just like also with like 12 hour time difference um and also i miss kind of like speaking with people who share my share the same language as me I am Cooper, currently hiding from the musical theater majors, and so I thought in order to help you guys, I would give you a couple of signs of how, how to know how to spot an MT. First of all, if they're singing Hamilton or Six in history class, they're probably an MT major. If they're singing and dancing outside, in the hallways, or anywhere, even at a funeral, they're probably an MT major. If they are eating in a group of 20 or more people, they're probably a musical theater major, and if they're lugging around a gallon large water bottle, they're probably an MT. So there you have it. Stay safe out there. This is Cooper Daughtry signing off. <laughs> And you can cut before I say. Hi, I'm Nyla. I'm a three-year VA, and I'm a, I'm the BSU president. Well, it's a great, it's a really great privilege to be with you. So every year we have an annual BSU um, community meeting or a Black History Month community meeting where we showcase a lot of Black artists on campus. We've been really focused on the community meeting for these past few weeks, but in the coming weeks of the um, of the month, we're thinking of having like. Uh, movie nights or um, like parties or dinners, you know, just to like bring up the spirits because February is just a really sad month. But we do want to um, celebrate I know, I black get, culture I, and stuff. Yeah. I get those feelings too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if people want to come to meetings or um, help plan events or help out with certain um, like things we have planned, just people just can come talk to us. People, um, that's how most of this community meeting happened or this coming community community meeting happened, people just wanting to involve themselves in, um, the, in Black History Month and um, the BSU, and also showcase black art, so, yeah. Um, I think, one, allyship is very important. Um, supporting people when they're struggling, like supporting communities that you're not a part of, like just things like that that provide some sort of comfort to people who, are, who might be going through things, or just um, kind of putting yourself in other people's shoes so that you can understand their experience more. Um, I think supporting um, the BSU and the black students on campus is just um, advocating when you see something wrong, advocating for their, um, their opportunities, like just being there as a beacon of like, I'm going to um, stand with you, I'm going to help you out, you know? and um, also just not actively trying to work against people, you know? Uh, so, yeah. Every year that I've been here, the BSU president has been a theater major, so um, it's been very th theatrical, like, they know what they were doing, they like, like last year with Cherie Pickett, um, their performance of, um, like, they had a whole performance planned out of black history throughout the decades, and this year we were trying to kind of deviate from that while still having the bones of, um, uh, like a theatrical performance because um, that's what gets people hooked, that's what gets people um, in, in, like, in the show, you know? This year, I um, kind of, I asked a lot of people, like my friends and stuff, and like other people that went to BSU, like to the BSU meetings, um, if they wanted to perform or if they wanted to have their work showcased. It's just like reaching out to people and most people are willing to have their work in the community, community meeting and um, to like to showcase their um, their majors or people that might not be represented a lot or might not get a bunch of opportunities to show what they actually do on campus. Um, so yeah, a lot of people are just willing to um, help out. And then this year, um, Mr. Mims, our advisor, has also helped a lot. He's like helped write, written, he's written like the script. He's, um, he's kept people on their stuff. Like, and, and I think, yeah, it, there's a lot of people that go into this. Like um, everybody on the board has helped a lot. Like it's just, it's just like a community effort for uh, the community meeting. So I feel like um, nowadays, um, people of color are becoming a very big part of art culture and things like that. Like a lot of um, 
black artists, Asian artists, like Pacific Islander artists, indigenous artists have been highlighted in the past few years because of kind of um, this more, like this awareness that there is a lack of color in these spaces. Um, there are still kind of, there are still um, like issues that like arise in like theater and getting people getting awards and stuff, people being snubbed for, um, Absol- <laughs> absolutely. I get that sometimes. Yeah. I, it's just like, um, there's still stuff to work towards, but, um, I think people are more aware of the, um, of the need for people of color in spaces, in artistic spaces. And there's been spaces opened up that um, kind of foster these people and help them get the opportunities that they need to highlight their um, talent. And I think that's something I want to do when I'm older. I want to like open a gallery and have a gallery that um, highlights pe- people of color and um, minorities and things like that so that there's a space for people that look like me, that don't look like me, that like just where they are safe and where they can um, get opportunities that will further their careers, you know? So I think we're doing better now, but like there's still a long way to go, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. But it's it's been a real great pleasure talking to you. <laughs> you too.